Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Chiluminati Podcast, episode 70. We're almost at 100. The I am cigarette as always, you needed host. after episode 69. Right. This is a week you've it's had a week to breathe. It's been long enough that I, I oh. thought they would have forgotten, but here we are, reminding them. How could you forget? Reminding them of it. Who would want to, to be honest? Uh, right. Who would want to forget them? <laughs> okay, <laughs> come on. You had to admit the letter writing one was tight. Yeah. Well, I, I want to know how many people made it to the letter writing one. I bet you a lot. I bet you. I bet you. I bet you every last every. I bet you every last listener. If you made it to the end, go to patreon.com oh and let us let us know. That guy's going right to email That's us. That's right. P- please. <laughs> the go guy's going to gonna email us. Who's going to email us? The Circle Bill <laughs> writer? No. You know what? No, the he, guy who's like, you spend 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what he can do? He can head over to patreon.com slash Illuminati pod. Sign up for our Patreon right now to get access to not only little mini episodes, bite-sized extensions to our current episodes that you get. Every time we do an episode, you get a little mini bite on the side. That's mm. tight. You also get exclusive art. You also get ad-free versions of our episodes if you hate ads for some reason. And <laughs> and and you'll get some sick-ass art, which I've said before, I wish this was a video podcast so I could like throw it up just to show you, but you should go to the site just to find out whether or not you think the art is tighter than you thought it was because I think it's going to be. And, and that's all I got to say. Like a, if you want a preview of it, go to our Twitter. I've retweeted some people who've printed the posters out of the art and hung them up on the walls and stuff, which is super cool. So go check that out. It's really high quality image files. So get <laughs> it's high that. quality PNGs. What can I tell you? It's high good quality. P- that's some that, 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 that's some high quality PNGs. A little Bobby like Boucher it. humor for you guys. You guys remember him from 20 years ago? You're the devil. 25 years ago? You're the devil, Alex. You know <laughs> Kathy Bates is in that movie. Yeah, she's like, great. What the fuck? She's great. Henry Winkler and Kathy Bates. All right, Waterboy's a great. <laughs> anyway, film. guess what today is, boys? <laughs> it's reader stories. They I keep love pouring these. Out. We gotta, we gotta keep pruning through them every so I'm often on, just on the Reddit's. And poo-poo our listeners. Don't you understand that they want ones. you to do that? Like some kind of weird, <laughs> fucked up relationship. I just, I just feel after the bad after, about after it, episode like, sixty nine, they might. I'm like, why are you lying to us? <laughs> We're going to start out with one simply titled Traveling Through Dimensions. Uh, <laughs> already this is, sold. This is given to us by Awkward Smile Meme. About halfway through, I stopped copying the names of the of the person who wrote it, so I, I, I apologize. I just simply forgot. So enjoy the names of the authors while we still have them. I just want to preface this that if the boys want to talk about this in the podcast, they can. I would love their opinions on this mind-bending experience. It's also not strictly paranormal or alien. However, I believe it can loosely fit the multidimensional alien line of thinking. I love this guy already. Okay. He's right, he, him and I would be good friends. <laughs> I can tell you right now. Okay. Okay. I have no real drug experience. Uh-oh. I was a boring suburban kid who also was never big in any sort of mind-altering substances, Uh-oh. even alcohol. Earlier this year, I decided to try marijuana for the first time. And the first and third time I tried it, I experienced realities past the veil that we normally see. Time out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. Time out. If this is just if this is just a super long-winded baked bean boy joke, I'm walking out this door. Oh man. If this, to, if this ends in the fucking bean boy, you tell me right now if this is a bean boy joke. I can't tell you where this is going until we're there. Oh, it could no. be completely what? legit or it could be Bean Boy related. I don't want to ruin it. I need to keep you on your toes. Is this just a giant Bean Boy bit? I, saw, I can relate to this man. I had a suburban upbringing. I didn't touch any alcohol until I was 21. I didn't touch weed until I was 30. It happened. Oh. Does the words oh, Bean Boy appear in this selection? <laughs> I'm more Don't you dare read ahead because I don't, I I don't think I so. I will not. I will I'm not. Here concerned we go. about the fact that on this podcast, we have mentioned weed numerous times. And this guy was like... Like, only this year did I think it would be cool to try it. I, I, are we the problem? Had nothing to do with us. Had nothing well, no, to do no, with no, us. Definitely not us, dude. I'm we a good not, influence. We are not. Kids, learn your lines. Kids, get your books Don't open. Don't do lines. Learn your lines. Turn, and your, also, turn your books to page knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, what, this is what becomes of you if you smoke weed. So. <laughs> we're like and I want to reiterate that from- both of these times I smoked with another person and neither had anywhere near the experience I had. So it's unlikely slash nigh impossible that the marijuana was tainted or laced with something else. The first time I smoked, I didn't feel anything until about 10 minutes in, at which point I went through the everything is funny phase before I got the spins and then threw up. Oh, it's extremely wow. realistic story. That's so rough. Far- that was my- <laughs> 
Yeah. That's rough. I'm sorry to hear that was your first experience with weed. We'll continue. This at the, at the point where things get absolutely bonkers. Immediately after I vomited, I picked my head up out of the toilet and then it hit me. I had no idea what or what I was or where I was. Not in the sense that I didn't know which person I was <laughs> or in which building I was in. What? <laughs> I didn't what have other the sense f- could that possibly be? <laughs> he didn't have that. I didn't have the thought of self. So you were like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> he was baked out of his mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I love I'm this sorry. Story. Nothing <laughs> says a high thought like I didn't have a thought of self. I this is like when you. This is like when you watch like a PSA about doing drugs, and the guy like smokes the joint, and then he's like, Whoa! like the sun like smiles at him, and like hippie music starts playing. Throws and shit. out the window. Yeah, and yeah it cuts to reality, and he's like, like falling. You would have tried to do like too much weed down the his own stairs at his house. House. The worst that's ever gone for me is like I can't move my head. You know what I mean? Like, I know, I'm like, terrible laughing. This could be like uh, you could phenomenal. have like I don't know. There's all sorts of chemical things that go on, and everyone's body's different. I feel terrible laughing. Yep. Oh, absolutely. However, however the, the this line is- I didn't have the thought of self is crazy high. Uh, did you just s- did you just s- wait? <laughs> just wait. This story is such a. I this is my first time smoking experience kind of story. I just love it. There's nothing wrong with it. This is like all... my first time dropping fucking acid story. Like I don't know. Yeah. What, like this you is had crazy. A, you had an intense high for weed. I will just uh, say this that. is like That's... DMT. All right. Continuing after I didn't have the thought of self. I didn't Everything have the thought was... of, <laughs> self. of self. That is. <laughs> The very thought that is like that, self was, that is like that guy <laughs> at the coffee shop where he said to me, "We're all moving at the speed of thought." That's oh my God, that that's is right. That, that's he's right. right. That's he's that right. Level. <laughs> he's not wrong. It and doesn't he's right. he, really make <laughs> sense, but technically, he's right. Yeah, he's right for the wrong reasons. <laughs> Everything was black, and then slowly, stars began to appear, as though I was looking at the night sky. I could feel that something was happening, but I was still not aware of the fact that I was me. The stars began to connect, at which point I had an epiphany. Quote, I am a number. What? (laughs) Did you smoke the stem of an entire mushroom? Like a weird mushroom this trip is like, right now. Hi, Homer, find your soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm crying. I love the story. I'm so oh. glad. I'm so glad. We're, this is landing. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. This is amazing, and I love it. I wish my highs were like this. Let's con- Jesse. For the sake, we have to push forward. <laughs> I, I just want to thank you all for sharing your stories with us. Right. Oh I love God. this podcast is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, after I just the epiphany. Want you to know, uh, <laughs> oh, I need to scroll back up. Uh, awkward smile meme. I just want you to know what makes this so funny to me is everything you're saying to us in quotes. Like I am a number of <laughs> It reminds me of things like when I was young, my friend Steve got really high and looked up at the sky and was like, dude, the moon has a purpose. Like that kind of stuff. <laughs> like exactly. <laughs> it just, oh my God. You're like, yeah, it does with the tides. Yeah, and stuff. Like, <laughs> you're not wrong. Oh God. All right. Uh. Sorry. So continuing on the story. Now I know this sounds absolutely wild, but it gets even stranger. As I thought about my new number self, Not in the sense that I was the number seven per se, but I was an infinitely long and complex number to which my consciousness was assigned. Okay. I became aware that I was not a number. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But the end result of an equation. (laughs) And then I realized I was the equation itself. How much time has passed? 
Well, that's Seconds. my question. Literally, yeah, like, <laughs> like, 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 you know, when Jada at the end of First Contact is like, oh, uh, I did consider it for a moment. And he's like, well, how long was that? And he's like, 0. 0.031 seconds. And he's like, but for an android, that's an eternity. Or whatever he says, that is how I imagine this. It all you happened in his head. Literally, he vomited. He whips his head up from the toilet and everything is changed. Yeah. You know when the baby, you know, like right before the baby shows up in 2001? Yeah. You know, yeah, like yes. that. I haven't seen it. When Dave is is hitting <laughs> that like amazing super tunnel. Yes. That's, okay. Yes. That's yes, where yes, my yes. head is at. Yep. I do know that scene. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! So he's the equation now, and he says, looking back now, I think either A, I was tripping major balls, or B, I was starting from the core of what makes an un- a conscious per- us a conscious people, or C, I was traveling through the different dimensions. Then, because I was thinking. I reasoned that I cannot be an equation. I must be the sum of a set of equations emulating a consciousness. Didn't think of humanity yet. It was at this point that I became aware of what was outside my consciousness. Those stars were still connecting only on the left half of my face. What? And and as if I were loading an image on a dial-up modem, the right side began to load line by line. Then I realized the right and left sides were connected. I was seeing one continuous image. Oh my God. By the God. time that the part of my visions where, where my eyes exist, about two thirds up of your field of vision. Yeah, He's trying to like, describe how things are filling in in his vision in the pitch black. Like first the left side, then the right side. The part I of his move. vision where his eyes exist. Yes, yes. That's, I think that's what he's trying to say. Uh-huh. I, I, he's, he's speaking from an enlightened standpoint. I, it's I, hard to comprehend. Yeah. He's I a tall white now. Exactly. I could move them and focus on the the individual parts of the image I was observing. This entire time, I could not move and did not move because it was not known to me that I was in a body or in control of it. Yo, that's oh, wow. you were definitely you were definitely high. That's he been completely uh, like, dissociated <laughs> from reality. Yeah, and he had like ego death from weed. He's explaining how eyes work. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I imagine him right now in this moment, death gripping the toilet, locked up and well, like staring at the ceiling. What's fascinating about this is you can you see all the signs of different bodily things happening. So like a great example is when you talk about coming up from the toilet and seeing stars, like there have been times where I've thrown up and it's because you're literally oh, yeah. depriving yourself of oxygen as you are like puking your guts out and you can't breathe uh, that you start to like see the little sparkly star things. I get that. And I also think the whole idea of it all, all this seeming to wash over you is kind of the, like when you're high, shit kind of slows down a little. And so I can see your mind. If it's a first time experience, like thinking all this is happening very, very slowly. Also the whole idea of being like outside your body. That's a super I'm high thing. Like I definitely, yeah. I definitely can see how all this we're, plays. We're along for this man's yeah. first oh, stone yeah. journey. I'm, and about I'm, this. I'm positive you were high. I just don't. <laughs> I'm not sure what you took. <laughs> <laughs> I'm positive okay. you were high. <laughs> <laughs> so we will continue. Uh, um, again, uh, I was in a body. He wasn't aware if he was in a body and that he was in control of it. This continued down to my mouth, and when I regained control of it, my first words were, "Oh my God! Holy shit!" So this is how it happens. <laughs> oh, that's another good line. Oh. I, I think I was referring to how the left part of my vision was fully intact, but only now the right side was coming into view and they were experiencing time in very different ways. By the time everything in my vision was visible at once, I realized that I was the thing I was looking at. I realized that the thing I was looking at was an image. I and it was that it was my reality. Okay, so the thing that it was seeing as an image was his reality. Yeah, now that's hold on because it gets it even wilder. Yes, that is how it works. You are correct. That is usually how world the reality works. Yeah, the image then turned on its flat side. Whoa, whoa, so that you I was looking a part. at whoa, a, whoa, you skipped a part. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I did skip. I'm so sorry. I saw <laughs> you skipped. I the saw craziest a figure. Part. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I saw a figure walk across the image as though I was looking down at street art or something. The image then turned on its flat side so that I was looking at a 2D object in 3D space. And from this plane, I began to emerge. You're looking at yourself emerge from the plane in which that you are looking at? 
while yes, you are like, emerging from it? He's, he's about to do, like he saw the picture, he saw something walk, it like turned flat and then he began to emerge I'm, from the flat. Okay, like, so I'm imagining like when you're in like when you're looking at like a picture of France and there's like it's like a drawing in chalk of like a hole on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Right? And then you know how in Portal if you like shoot the portals in just the right way you can see yeah. your own ass? Yeah. <laughs> it's like That's, that. I'm <laughs> yeah, like the those two <laughs> sensations mixing together is where my head I'm is at. I'm still right with now. them like I, this doesn't sound like weed. Yeah, I don't know what's That's what happening. I'm saying. Like somebody, somebody, I don't know where you got this weed, but I don't know that they were completely honest with you. And you know what, Alex? You make a good point. Let's stay honest with our listeners. Support for Illuminati is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over the technology developed to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. And trust me, you want to make sure you're as good looking as possible for when the aliens scoop you up and they check you out themselves. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. I'm just going to say personal experience is pretty nice. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. And when I tell you this is premium, I do mean premium. The battery will last 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. The waterproof technology allows you to groom in the shower. One of the coolest features is the LED light, which illuminates grooming areas for closer, more precise trimming. And they've also upgraded to a 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology. Ooh, baby, keep it nice and shh, 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 shh. And let's not forget about the charging stand. Show your mower off loud and proud, baby, because when the girls come over and they go, do you? And you just go, yeah, you're going to be like, hell yeah, because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB. If you're listening to me speak right now, I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Trim that stuff of yours, get 20% off and free shipping with the code chill at manscaped.com. I promise you, your balls will thank you. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code chill. C-H-I-L-L at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Don't forget to use the code CHILL. It started with the (laughs) crown of my head in the exact center of the image. And layers of who I am began to emerge as my body began to emerge. Like a 3D that mean? print? That like, like 3D visual? printing yourself yeah, like into he's existence? He's 3D printed or he's just coming out of mold like a Terminator? Layers of who I am began to Let's see what he means emerge. by that. I realized I was human. What my name was. How old I was. That I was a man. What my voice sounds like. Intrinsic characteristics about myself. The oddest thing was that the parts that did not emerge yet cycled through as though I were all of them at the same time before I realized my sex, I was fluctuating between human man and human woman. Like I was being 3D printed as my mouth and neck became. It was revealed to me what my voice was. Every aspect of my life, I was I was saying as facts as they materialized. I live in blah. I enjoy this. I have these relationships with these people. Basically, he's speaking his life and it's coming into into fruition before him physically. Right. At a certain point after my body materialized, I realized or thought that each person has a set image that we emerge from. And it was at this point that I was very upset that the image I was emerging from was the image of a toilet with vomit in it. Now that I knew I was the person I am, I realized that the image was actually part of a 3D space. I could interact with it and I could associate the visual elements of what I was seeing to the physical things that I exist. So now is like the bathroom that he was vomiting and is starting to like, he can see it. He visualizes it. It's like, he's coming back into his body where he left it. It sounds like. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, I saw the paper tower, pa- paper towel roll and willed myself that a, I could reach for it and B, I could grab it and interact with it such that I could manipulate the reality or dimension space that I was in. This continued and ended in me getting off of the toilet, laying in bed, falling asleep. And then when I woke up, I finally realized, yes, I am me. This is the world we live in. And this reality is correct. Real reality. I went about my day as normal, as normal as I could anyway. That is so crazy to me because it just seems like 
You didn't smoke weed. No, it just seems like <laughs> your entire perception of like your entire process of being a human thing, just you experienced it in extremely slow motion. Like everything that you're describing is just like somebody existing from one second to the next, like slowly describing how your eyes move and <laughs> see images, slowly describing how like you're constantly thinking about the truths of your life as like a platform for your own reality. Like it's, these it's are like, all things that we do yeah. all day, every day without thinking about them. But it just seems like this sort of like you stretched it out and you looked at like five seconds of just the complexity of existing and you analyzed <laughs> it uh, with, with, you know, fun visuals as if it was, as if it was an hour. Yeah. Yeah, basically. I mean, like, you know, it's like when you know you smoke weed and things kind of weird, but slow you just and get blurry. Slow yeah, it's like it literally broke down time scale into quantum mechanics for this poor guy for a little while. Yeah, you saw like but the frames. Gets, but we are done. It gets so much better. The second time I smoked was fairly unmemorable as I, I as a consciousness moved through my eyes a little bit and then I was just kind of fine. So yeah, normal, normal time, second time smoking. What? what but like, we can't just brush... Can't just but like yes, whatever. My consciousness moved through my eyes, but you know whatever. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like you, know, your brainness <laughs> went into your, your eyes. Brain. I, I mean, think I think it's the whole like uh, like tingly vibe kind of thing. Is what okay. he's trying to describe. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, like a headband kind of vibe. Yeah. The third time, however, is why I won't touch weed to this. Oh my day. god, I'm ready. And I'm not sure I ever will oh again. Oh my God, I just I'm ready. Know. What happened to you? I just want to know where you're getting it from. I'm worried about you. <laughs> I want to know because I, I would love to get it from them. No, I'm what? worried about you. I don't ever want to be like, and then my mouth came into being and I was not. <laughs> I 3D printed woman. myself on my own eyeballs as I watched myself operate the printer from inside of the printer. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> that sounds oh like you took God. salvia is what it sounds like. It actually does. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've only ever touched weed, so I can't tell you. Don't now. Don't do salvia. Oh my god! Okay, I won't. If you want to know reasons why, just Google dudes filming themselves. Watch, <laughs> watch, watch the video driving a car while on salvia. That's the best one. Oh my god, that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> I'll show already. you. We'll watch the video together oh after god, this. That'll be our chill. I can't wait. That'll be our chill. Our Illuminati bonding session. Yes. So <laughs> now remember, both of these times I smoked with someone else. I didn't have too much, and they just got normal high. I took two moderate hits off of a bong and then was fine for about 20 minutes, laid in my bed, and the same adventure or trip began. I was a number, then an equation, then a series of both until I finally landed on, am I an AI? Am I an AI? <laughs> the Matrix. The Matrix st Dude, the stone of thought has entered. <laughs> Wait, here's I my... would not smoke weed either if this is what happened to me. This but is I, too right, much. I would stop too. I would. I, this is not what I'm looking Why for with my land marijuana on experiences. AI when you were clearly just an I. No, you're artificial. He's he's like. No, he, he, I think he's he partially because believe, he believes he's an equation or the result no, of an we're equation. All equations and results are were results of of simulation. Maybe we're all an AI. Maybe we're you're all not in a simulation. Maybe rea maybe conscious reality Everything doesn't actually exist. A, conscious reality is a simulation. It's your brain right. simulation of what it's of all of the the Fair. like your brain tells you what is around you. This could be one yeah, of those things yeah, where like I touch my mouse, but it's really like a fleshy creature but my my body my brain's like it's a mouse you never know you'll never know it, everything is perceived by you it's a simulation you your brain know. puts together this in is, your head this is your existential dread for the I day i almost want you to try salvia listener <laughs> right. writer no. because right. I, I, uh, yeah what, if what this is hot these? like where will you go on salvia <laughs> he's the key he's the key to moving into the higher state of being uh, you just gotta not, get him the right no, drugs don't you're, gonna come, you're gonna come out of <laughs> no, that don't high. do this and then COVID will just be gone. You'll be like, I figured it out. I figured it out. The equation of this, of being COVID, uh, it was, it. it's gone. And you're like, what this, do you mean? It was an AI. <laughs> this time, however, I continued to add layers. It was as if I was looking at a cube emanating this golden light before I discovered it was a tesseract <laughs> and that the tesseract was my consciousness. I, you know, that's actually somewhat accurate. If you think yeah, about fair it. Enough. Yeah. Once this became evident, it was as if a camera flew up from out of my body and zoomed out to see the planet, then the solar system, and so on. I think there's a meme of this, right? 
<laughs> yeah, burn or ner, burn or ner, <laughs> just fly out. They were all connected. They were all the stars from where, from when I began to see them for the first time. From when I began to see for the first time. Period. I'm sorry, began to see for the first time, not period. see them for the first. So sorry. It's, as these stars were linking up, I realized that that as indeed no, try that again. As these stars were linking up, I realized that that was indeed my consciousness. A system of information traveling throughout a galaxy or universe. Not wrong. No, again, he's not wrong. The camera then whipped back into my body and I knew that everything had happened and it all felt absolutely true. See, but that's the funny thing about a brain, because if you, your brain tells you it happened, then it's just you're going to think it happened. True. I could, I could see in front of me and behind me, but the sides were all were still blackness. Then it came to pass that those were star systems or planets or whatever, uh, or whatever they were that hadn't had marijuana yet. I'm sorry, what? Uh, <laughs> like the, okay, all right, no, I'm with you. They could not see, so they could not be seen. Oh, had, marijuana the is holy, the key to seeing. Holy, Did you create a religion? Is that where this is going? Holy shit. Is this the B-Boy? Oh my God. Holy shit. It, what are you, the are you, hell It occurred to me, happened. though, that if... It, it occurred to me that if it occurred to me that if the marijuana was obtained through illegal means, that it could not achieve the same level of consciousness altering. Oh my god! Holy I love shit! That what, so time much. out! What just happened? We took a turn I was not expecting. All those things that he saw, all those stars and systems, they were and connected planets because they had marijuana. And the darkness that he saw to left and right of him were things that don't have pot. Hence, they could not be seen. They could not be seen yet because they had not been enlightened by marijuana. If this is if this is Bean Boy, I'm walking into the sea. <laughs> Let's continue to find out. Of course, since at this point I was a multidimensional space being, eventually they all became lit as time passed. Right, they did. What felt like seconds were millennia and eons. After this, I became aware that others must be the same system of complexities. And then finally, I was in my body again. And I could not see everything that I saw anymore. For the next three days, I believed I was a facsimile of myself, created by myself, to complete work that I needed to do. But I am unsure. That's true, this, too. Again, he's just, he's realizing what life is. <laughs> yeah. This suspicion that everything was a simulation and time was moving in a very strange way continued for this four-day duration. I came to understand the purpose of consciousness and what it was. Consciousnesses exist to love and bring joy to other consciousnesses. <laughs> I mean, I, Yo, again, I, mean, you're I like wrong. the message. Yeah, solid. Yeah. They exist to interact with each other and live as happy, joyful existences. You took a ride to get I, there, but like you got there, dude. That's yeah. All yeah, right. He, yeah, he, you're right. A hell you're right. Ride. Some people just read a book, but you got <laughs> there through the God leaf, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess says a lot about my nature, but I'm not sure. I won't touch weed again because I am afraid of what else I would see. What lies beyond. I don't, or I don't blame you. Yeah, dude, I don't either. What lies beyond or outside those layers. And I don't want to get trapped in that state with no real way of coming back. There's also a, a possible scientific reason for everything I experienced. A drug induced psychotic break. This is possible as, as I'm on two different antidepressants at the moment and have struggled with mental illness a lot this year. However, something keeps gnawing at the back of my thinking that it was real. And that I didn't go crazy. I discovered some innate truths about the nature of existence, reality, and our dimensions. Aside from being an existence made up of nebulous pockets of thought, I didn't really experience any other life or existence during my journey. No interdimensional travelers, no aliens, nothing. Um, but maybe it was like I was behind the wheel of a car. I didn't know how to drive. I couldn't direct my journey. It just kind of occurred to me. I just want to know what you think about it. This came to mind because I recently re-listened to the Men in Black episodes where the topic was related to what is reality, and Jesse had that story of when he had acid. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I I will say that the outcome of these experiences, I think, got you to a place that a lot of people, when they have drug experiences, get to. And the idea of, like, there's clearly something more than the everyday grind of existence and what we perceive reality to be, there's a little bit more to it. And in the end, the only thing you can do is appreciate that 
uh, be it star or tree or the darkness of space, everything is connected in some way. And we're all kind of made up of the same stuff. And the only way to go about life is like, you know, treating things right and bringing joy and love to people. That's like the salt. Like, that is the classic. <laughs> was a- you took a, you took a, like a long ass way to get there. But in the end you had the classic high experience. Really? You really did. Yeah. It like, really did. like, how do I describe this? Some people not naming names, <laughs> some people, uh, you know, when they experience something extremely trippy, they just sort of like, Roll with it, go, whoa, <laughs> like, dude, nuts, right? And that's who, how who some people, I don't know. Uh, hmm. I've never Maybe heard either. of that, uh, anybody actually doing that. But, right. the uh, you know, some people do that, and it's it's more, you know, something that you're already, you're, you're just experiencing. And I think the way that you described it, it seems like something that you very earnestly went through, you know, without a lot of pessimism or skepticism. You know what with I mean? A, with a, with, with a that, with that said, though, let's be very clear. Uh, at the end here, the inclusion of I'm on two different antidepressants, l- l- you know, you are you were mixing chemicals then, essentially. Yes, you were the 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 weed and those antidepressants that could have some effect on what you saw. The outcome is this thing where you came to the place. I think a lot of people who, you know, do shrooms or whatever, like they have this, like I am one with the universe and, you know, I want to make things better for the world like that. That's usually what happens. But the process I think was a combination of a lot of drugs in your system of, of like, cause this doesn't sound like weed. It it, it sounds yeah, like no. something different and it probably has to do with the other drugs in your system. Yep, definitely. I think uh, I, I agree. I think like I think, you know, a lot of people think that getting stoned and tripping out is like the search for answers. Right. And but I think really what it is, is you're you're learning that there aren't answers yeah. uh, and you there are many more things than you expected that you simply have to decide. Yeah. And that's and that's like, you know, the gift of psychedelics that like lots of people talk about, I think like that's why so many people have these religious experiences associated with fucking eating like 100 leaves and jumping up and down and going crazy in the jungle while some lady hits you with a stick and like repeats the same shit over and over. And you just like start crying and like fall in love with the entire earth, you know, like Mm -hmm. pretty much it's in one, in the one hand it's fucking gross and like fucked up and weird and like totally disturbing that you're doing it. Like looking at a bug writhing around on the ground or something. You know, you're just (laughs) reacting to some fucking chemicals. But on the other hand, like if you have an artistic enough brain, if you're like thinking about it poetically enough, you can really sting. Yeah, you can really. Yeah. You turn into uh, sting from uh, like how he appears in the movie Dune. (laughs) That's kind of how you look. Well, but even more than that, you don't even need to have the artistic brain because you'll process it even if you do it quantitatively or you do it at the most basic bare bones level. You'll notice something that you never noticed before. And I think that. Uh, is what happened here. I think you like everything you said at its base level when you're just like, we're all equations. Like, sure, we're all the sum of equations of countless generations before us. Like, there's so much that you got right, but it was just like, far out, man. <laughs> right? The lens at which yeah. you saw the, yeah. the answers is all, you know? Both mm-hmm. are valid. A wild story. Mm-hmm. I love that story. Thank you for taking Both us are on valid. It. All are true. It's weird. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, do you want to take this next one? Sure. It, it's uh, your, yours for, for the reading here. You got it. Ghost Children and Shapeless Demons by True Queen of Trash. If you would like to use this story on the podcast, you have my explicit permission to do so. Any edits are fine. I'm going to right. fuck this up. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make any edits. This I'm going to take some poetic license. That's all. Perfect. This is a story from just a few years ago when I lived in the college dorms. Uh, While I have a few paranormal-like experiences, such as electronics turning on in the middle of the night, this story is not necessarily about that. In fact, this story isn't necessarily paranormal at all, but it did scare the crap out of me. To preface things, I'm kind of like Jesse in that I don't know that I really believe in ghosts, and I think that our minds are very mysterious and can make us believe crazy things. It's almost like the aliens, somebody put these two right in order after each other, like it makes sense or something, right? Uh, with that said... <laughs> My scary experience started because I took an extra dosage of my meds one morning. Oh, man. Do we, do we have a theme going here? 
<laughs> yeah, as a- I take Adderall for my ADHD, and for whatever reason, I had managed to take twice my normal dosage one day. My head hurt and felt foggy all day, and eventually my heart started racing like crazy. I realized what I did and told a friend of mine who I'll call Rachel. I started to get worried because my chest hurt and I couldn't walk well. I ended up going to the hospital. The cost of going there might even be the scariest part of the story. Yeah, I hear that. Fair enough. Dude, yep. I, I know. One time my roommate Oof. took me to UCLA Medical and it like wrecked me <laughs> uh, for an anxiety attack. Crazy. I had like Ugh. a Xanax and they sent me home uh, <laughs> for $6,000. Yeah, it was like a couple G's uh, at the hospital. <laughs> they asked me all the usual questions. I told them what was going on and eventually used an IV to sedate me with something. And it turned out I just had a sort of panic attack. Sure. I went to my dorm room and laid down for the rest of the day while some Rachel and another friend took care of me. Fast forward to that night where things started to get really unsettling. I was having a hard time walking and I still was not in a perfect state of mind after everything. Rachel, or whatever her real name is, would help me get up and walk for things like if I needed to go to the bathroom. Uh, eventually, Rachel and another friend left and my only friend and only my friend Alex was with me. This is starting to get scary. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I kept hearing people calling my name and loud banging from outside of the room, and I would ask my friend if he heard anything. He kept telling me that he didn't hear any, any noise. I wasn't sure, though. I continued to hear what sounded almost like children calling my name, which was especially weird as we were in a college dorm. Oh, thank you. Dude. Eventually, I got up and told Alex, I can walk fine. I'm just going to get some water, which was a total lie because I stumbled down the hall. I made it to the bathroom, which is where the drinking fountain was, and leaned down to drink some water. When I was trying to drink from it, I accidentally bumped my head against the fountain. Well, I thought I only bumped my head, but I may have actually slammed it in the fountain harder than I thought because I had to sit on the ground in the hallway after leaving the bathroom. Dude, this happened to me when I got up uh, off a plane one time. I hit my head on the little thing at the top. I thought I concussed myself. I hit myself so Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, I told Alex that I had just bumped my head, and we didn't think much of it, but unsurprisingly, hitting my head seemed to make everything much worse. I started hearing voices much louder and clearer than before. They were the same voices like that of children calling my name, asking to see me. I felt like we weren't alone in the room. I kept asking Alex if anyone else was there, and he kept reassuring me that he was the only one in the room. Eventually, I heard the voices say, we are coming to you. No. I was really scared at this point. (laughs) I thought I kept seeing things in the room. I felt like we weren't alone, and I was really on edge. And then I saw her. For a brief moment, I saw what looked like the ghost of a younger girl by one of the lofted beds. I couldn't tell if she was floating or hanging there. She didn't exactly look like a ghost girl in the traditional semi-transparent, tattered clothes way. I can't really describe what I saw, but it was more formless than you might think a ghost would look like. And she didn't really have a discernible face, but somehow deep down, I had an understanding of what I was seeing. It was like my brain knew what I was seeing, even if there wasn't a clear physical image. And this is actually interesting because I have a similar experience uh, with a ghost that I saw in my grandma's house one time. Wait, what? Yeah, I saw like a figure in the hallway a couple times, like walking into the other room as I was coming out of a room. Oh, that's cool. It was fucking weird. You know, sh- shout out to, to Nani who just passed. I would ever when she passed, I was begging her not to haunt me and she hasn't shown up. So thank you. That's Nani. awesome. Appreciate it. Did I tell the story of my friend who's uh, Nona Nona passed away with the family all around her? And then she like 20 seconds later, like popped back up and like made like one more loud sound and scared the shit out of everyone. And then she died again. Nice. That's that's awful. <laughs> everybody like I the, the, what what he said happened was that everybody like it happened and then they all like laughed because it was like so fucking crazy that it happened. Yeah, that uh, this is like no other reaction. Yeah. Uh, all right. It goes on. She didn't move or speak while she was in the room. She had disappeared soon after I saw her. Alex continued to tell me that he had not heard or seen anything, but I was starting to freak him out because of how convinced I sounded. After the girl, I saw what looked like faces appearing on the walls, smiling at me. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, this is not good. I also saw a long, dark figure in the mirrors in the room. It was faceless and mostly featureless, but moved in quick bursts of motion, kind of like a spider. The entire time I was seeing these things, I didn't hear anything else. There were no voices. Eventually, Alex called Rachel and let her know that I was going completely (laughs) insane. She came down to get me and realized I needed to go back to the hospital. On the way, I saw the dark figure following us in reflective surfaces along the way. It was like it was stalking just behind me, watching me. When we got to Rachel's car, I saw what looked like someone inside. I asked who was already in the car, and she looked freak and told me no one was in the car. 
On the way to the oh. hospital, my friends made me put a blanket over my head so I would stop seeing things and freaking them out. <laughs> like a horse, like, oh, sh- 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 yeah. it's going to be fine. Dude, I mean, look, sometimes like, sometimes when you're in, a, in the wrong mindset, it can be bad. All I remember after getting to the hospital was going into a room with a doctor. The next thing I knew, I woke up in my dorm room because someone had brought me lunch. A couple days later, my head hurt really bad. And as it turned out, I had given myself a concussion on the drinking fountain. So the obvious conclusion would be that I was so messed up on drugs and that a concussion that I hallucinated everything, but it still made me feel uneasy that I was hearing voices before I hit my head. And later on in that year, I bumped my head again and saw and felt I was stalked by the dark figure again. I was uneasy for a while after seeing all of this stuff and my reality felt broken. I am better now and I have been concussion free since. Is it possible that our minds protecting us from the terrifying reality of our world, which is revealed to us if we knock our brains out of commission for a while? No, probably not. Anyway, that's my crazy experience with hallucinations and the paranormal. I hope you found it interesting. How very connected. There is a theme. How very connected to the last story. A little bit. I, I yeah. what I love about that is that you were down to earth in your expectations of what happened. That most likely it was the drug induced head slamming that made it all happen. However, it doesn't mean it was any less scary because seeing things and getting like weird out about stuff. There's been times where I think everyone has been sick or been on something or something happened to them and they like felt uncomfortable and weird. I can see that being, being terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I totally, I get it. Like I've been that scared of shit before, you know, it was stuff that turned out to be like sleep paralysis Mm -hmm. or something like that. But like, I, I, I don't think it's impossible to actually experience things like that with your, with your brain. No, uh, absolutely, and, not. and have agree. nothing wrong with you. I don't think it means necessarily that you're like fucked up if you're experiencing something like that. I think just sometimes your brain gets there and it's and it's crazy. Although, it's let's really quickly, I just want to address a thing to people, uh, just in general, because I love this idea. Uh, is it possible that our minds are protecting us from the terrifying reality of our world? Again, very Lovecraftian. But here's the truth, and this is what I'll say: What are you going to do about it? Yeah. If there's yeah. if there's another existence and there's like shadow people walking around us all the time and like horrifying realities outside of our own, what could you possibly do about it? Nothing. Can I talk about something real quick? It's semi alien related, but directly related to the reality thing you're talking about. Sure. Back two years ago, 2018, the FBI released a bunch of files that came from the 1940s, especially after Roswell, which is the only reason I came across this shit in the first place from Roswell. But there are files out there. I'm going to get the links. Maybe we'll talk about them on the mini sode that talk about that these other beings that we're seeing in the sky, these UFOs, are not aliens from another world, but they're literally directly on top of us. That they're in this other dimension existence. That they, but they, I'm sure you've heard of this before. But they exist in another vibration length. Like they, they vibrate at a different frequency than we do. So the reason that we see them pop in and out all the time is because it's them popping in, vibrating to the three dimensional space popping in, doing what they're going to do, and then they disappear because they pop out and they're they're kind of like overlaid on top of a us, thinning, basically. If you will. A of thinning, the boundaries a between our worlds. But in reality, yeah. what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You can't do it. That's the worst <laughs> no, part. It's you just can't like do anything getting, about it. It's like seeing a waterfall and being like, fuck, they're, dude, what are the, we going to do? In the paper, Water, dude. In the, paper the, the FBI report, like uh, the, the, in the paper, shows you the steps you can take to try and vibrate to their frequency and stuff. But it's like, meditation and like all this other practice stuff they have to do. It's it's like what people might ascribe to astral projection is actually just doing this. Yeah, it's like transcendental just, meditation. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, so I'm going to read the next story because the one after that is a dream interpretation. And that's specifically for oh this. Okay, boy. So this one is simply called the time a ghost scared the life out of me. Oh, it's also by lady cry 19. Thank you. Oh, Hey, look at you going out of your way. I'm finding these I'm a stories. Nice, I appreciate it. Cool guy. What can I say? You're a nice, cool co-host, bro. Hello. I recently started listening to the podcast and I love it. I thought I'd share my ghost story because why not? Maybe you'll find it interesting and you guys could talk about it if you want. I'm not the kind of person to say every creepy thing is the result of a ghost, but personally, I do not have a proper explanation for this event aside from a ghost messing with me. (laughs) Every story starts like this. Now, let me just say that I'm not a crazy person, but here's what my fucking story is. Right, exactly. (laughs) We appreciate you defending your own mental health. I get it. I like it. (laughs) Me too. 
For context, I'm convinced that if ghosts are real, they get the energy to screw with people through fear. This particular night, my older brother was teasing me by showing me pictures of aliens, those gray bug-eyed looking monstrosities. Oh, you don't have to clarify. I know what you're talking about. They're called grays. We know. Yeah, they are called grays. Correct. I used to be terrified just looking at pictures and my brother knew this. He showed me, laughed at me when I started crying and then our mom yelled at us both for sending uh, before sending us to bed. Oh, I've had so many scenarios like that growing up. Do you up, remember the you. show Kablam? Yes, I do. Kablam! On Nickelodeon, uh, great. if you're yes. 30 years old. Little, little stick figures. Yeah. And so there whatnot. was one segment on there that or was about figures. a caveman and an alien that was like yeah, really, right. it was really funny. It was called Prometheus and Bob. Like Prometheus going and Bob. back and looking at it now, I love it. It's like as funny as those goofy cartoons. It's also the true history of Earth <clears> and Yes, humanity. exactly. But when, I was a, but when I was a kid, the intro to that segment like scared the shit out of me. It has like major X-Files intro vibes. <laughs> And it was so scary for me as like a young kid that I like didn't want to see it when it came on. Just the intro. I actually don't remember the intro. It was too scary to look at. I remember. <laughs> too scary to look at. I have at. no idea what was scary this. about it now, like watching it again. Mm. But I, man. Anyway, after getting grounded sent to bed, let's continue. So if there was a ghost there that night, it got energy through my fear and crying through those pictures because it brothers me. This happened to me when I was 13, maybe, maybe 13 years old. My younger sister and I used to share a bedroom and we were just sleeping like normal that night. When my younger sister and I fell asleep, I have no idea what time it was, but the bedroom door was suddenly flew open. The door handle hit the wall hard enough to make a loud noise and it woke me up. It must not have been that loud because my sister only rolled around and I'm a really light sleeper. Because of my sleep state, I didn't really process what happened right away, but I, I was alert all of a sudden when I heard what sounded like scratching on my wall. It was as if someone had short nails and were just running it over the texture of the wall. Nothing ear shattering, but definitely creepy. Ugh. Our bed faces the wall. And even though it was nighttime, there was enough moonlight in the hallway to bleed into the room and show me that nothing was really in front of me. Obviously, I'm pretty awake and scared at this point, but I just grip my blankets tighter. The noise stops pretty soon after, after before the TV suddenly turns on. This is the strangest part because I had the remote beside me on the bedside and no one was in front of me. And with the TV to shed some light, I could definitely see that no one was there. The whole event, door, door scratching noise and TV, had to have only taken about two minutes in total. It all happened so quickly and suddenly. I held still in complete panic for a few minutes. I thought the TV would do that scary movie trope where it shows me something, but it didn't. It was just a pure, uh, just, just a blue or black screen. It's an old TV, so I can't remember what it actually shows. Waiting for my, mom, my my game system to turn on so I could show stuff. After realizing nothing else was happened, I woke up my sister because I'm a jerk and was too scared to move and convinced her to go close the door while I turn off the TV. She's a really heavy sleeper, but to this day, I'm still shocked she didn't wake up. I asked my brother about it the next day, thinking he did, his, he did this as a prank to screw with me after the alien pictures thing, but he swears he didn't. My brother is not the best liar, and when confronted, he usually confesses right away. But when I talked to him, he really had no idea what I was talking about, and even said that I that I would have been able to see from his uh, from him see him from the TV light. A couple months later, he did try to reenact this event to mess with me, but from the second he opened my door, I could see his figure, so that further cemented the fact that the I first event was not him. There's so many things that have happened to me like this in my life, and I like hate it. Oh, that's that's awful. So there you have it. Nothing terrifying. And I've never had any other event beside this one, but it was enough to make me believe that ghosts probably exist. I like to think that they do, but I also don't point any, uh, but I also don't point any little creepy events to ghosts. When I tell the story, I get a mix of it's ghosts or aliens messing with me. <laughs> I don't think it's aliens. That's dude, <laughs> just saying. It's either ghosts or aliens. I have, I have one like a very thin wall on one of the walls of my apartment with my neighbor and it's like the wall where both of our kitchen cabinets, like both touch it from either side oh, of the wall. Okay. Yeah. And so whenever they go into their cabinets and shit, it like I can hear it. You know what I mean? Like when the when the doors to their cabinets close and shit like that, I can hear it. So a lot of the time when I'm like up late at night, like doing whatever the fuck I do in the middle of the night, looking at my TV and whatever, like on YouTube, looking at gross videos, sweet videos. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what like. I'll hear a noise and it'll like freak me out. But usually I'm like, oh, it was just the fucking neighbors. Right. Or like, oh, it's like this one chip inside this bag of chips finally settling or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But one time yeah, that would freak yeah, me but out. One time I heard a guy do like a full on flat ball change in my kitchen, like a fucking tap dancing guy. 
And what? it was so loud, so much more loud and so much more like unique of a sound that it sounded exactly like a man tap dancing. And I got up and I went over there to see what it was, thinking that Wallace had like fucked something up royally or whatever. And <laughs> yeah. no one was there. Wallace was not in the room. I was totally alone. I still have no idea what it was. And all logic dictates that it was my neighbors. But uh. it was just, you know, just that little bit different. Where yeah, it doesn't quite enough, sit right. Because you're used to everything else. So you, you, would, easy, you would be able yeah, to Yeah, you're not trying to be different. unreasonable. It's just that little bit enough different to fuck you up. Well, that's creepy as hell. Jesse, the next one's all okay. you. Okay. Uh, this one has no name, but it's called Dream. It's called Dreams or Parallel yes. Worlds, Jesse. So I'm sure Alex can deep dive and find us who this was. Um, dreams, uh, excuse me, Dreams and Parallel Worlds. Sometimes I have incredibly it's by realistic. Rezuf. All right. Sometimes I have incredibly realistic dreams that are odd. So it is possible that when we dream, we see parallel worlds. Often when I dream, they're just jumbles of nothing, things that don't make sense and so are easily forgotten. One of these realistic dreams involved a desolate snowy world with fallen skyscrapers filling this otherwise white tundra with no trees or mountains on sight or in sight. Excuse me. Two people bundled up in thick clothing head to one of the fallen skyscrapers inside the skyscrapers are cubicle walls and papers. Uh, ever the building it, it, I guess in everything, maybe, uh, and papers, yeah, and everything. papers and everything. The building is rigged with a generator. Also inside is an older man working on a robot he believes will help save the world. Personally, I don't see how. <laughs> a little editorial <laughs> yeah. commentary on your own fucking dream. I love that. <laughs> Though I'm unsure as to why this world is so desolate, I know it's worse than it appears. One of the two people headed inside messed up and left a small fire running just a bit too long outside and alerted others. These others are similar to humans, but with light, pale green skin, and they live deep underground. Creepily, they capture humans, though they do not eat the dead. That is not their goal in capturing humans. Really, they chain people along oh, the belly the and one leg. The goal of tightly packing people is to produce heat. Rather creepy world, I think. They kidnap the people to make them bo- to use their body they heat. Eat That's the so dead. inefficient. They eat the dead, but breed them for their heat. No, that's I don't, weird. That's not what they. Oh, oh, though they do eat the dead. That's not their goal. Oh, okay. So, so they, they are they are not above eating us, but they're actually doing it because they need to be warm. Yeah, interesting. Sounds like someone played Metro Exodus. Yeah. All right. So I mean, just off the from Jump Street. Um, this seems like one of those dreams. I think a lot of people have, that they want to try and make deeper meaning out of it, but it seems like you, like everyone else, uh, take in a lot of cool media and this is just your mind jumbling that media together. There's a lot of things from different bits of media and different things here that are combined together and your brain just, you know, sometimes it's not always, your brain working through a thing. Sometimes your brain is just putting bits of information that you've stored in it uh, together. And sometimes this happens, but if you like, you want to get deep dive into things. Um, I mean, frozen worlds, uh, uh, like the idea of a tundra snow. It's all very like um, being emotionally frozen or cold or distant. And, uh, I can see two people representing what most people would consider like a relationship and how someone in this relationship left something unfinished or did something wrong and how it like exposed problems, right? Cause the green people would be the problems coming for the relationship and green obviously can either be greed or jealousy, right? Uh, or, or just the concept of growth. Right, because things grow and they're yeah. green. So maybe it's could either be a good or positive thing. Who knows? It also could be terrible, right? Like the thing that was exposed was growing jealousy between the two people, right? Uh, and then there's a guy working on a way to fix a thing, but you personally don't see how that thing he's creating, this artificial thing, could possibly save 
these two people, for example. So like, that's the deep dive and like you're working through some stuff, but really it also most likely, cause I've had dreams like this. It's just kind of like a bunch of cool stuff you put together and now it's a cool dream. Like it's, it's an allegory for America. It's an allegory for life. It's an yeah. allegory for a lot of things. I would be more interested. Like, for example, I constantly have dreams set in this hotel with a lot of tropical plant life outside that I don't really see, but I know is somehow somewhere in the hotel is on fire. I have a mm. dream like that where I oh, return to that place. Weird. I return to that place all the time. I know that it's like kind of a common thing for things to be on fire in people's dreams. Like for some reason, sure. it's like one of the things like the tropes, like your teeth falling out, something like that yep. is like, Oh, this room is on fire. Like if you've ever seen, I forget what movie it is. I think it's science of sleep. There's like one of those where <laughs> uh, they go into the dreams and it's like one of them is on fire. But I would be interested to know if this is a recurring setting for your dreams, because I think those are the, is, I think those dreams are very interesting. Well, yeah, Alex, yeah, I mean, be. going into your dream, the idea, I'm going to go into your head for a minute. The idea of having a dream where, you know, there's a problem and you can't see it. Uh, it's the concept of like an ever looming, like there's something in your life is stressing you out. And the idea that you know, it's there. And it's a big problem, right? Something's on fire, but you cannot physically address it because you don't know where it's coming from. I mean, that's a huge thing that a lot of people have. I wonder what that could be. They have a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, what in the world is causing stress that we have no direct control yeah, over wow. right now? It's, yeah, it's, you know, you can't control it. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, a simple well, one. Yeah. It resonates with me. Boys, listeners, that's it for reader stories today. Okay. We're going to cut it there. Love to see uh, it. You do love to see it. Great stories all the way around. I enjoyed the drug journeys today. That was oh, a lot of man. fun. Two very different so, drug journeys. I'm sorry to both of you, but I also kind of am jealous of both of you. Is that weird? A little bit. I am too. <laughs> no, nope, I'm too. good. I don't need to experience we will. my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we will return next week. Uh, if you and we'll we'll have a mini soda after this as well. So if you guys want to go listen to the mini soda, head over to the Patreon. You can jump onto. One of the tiers, you get something. You got ad-free episodes. You got exclusive digital posters. You got the mini sods that we're going to go do. What doesn't it All have, kinds of good honestly? Stuff. You know what I mean? It, honestly, uh, the contract to my soul. I don't know of like a there. better Patreon anywhere. There is none. But we you know what? If you Patreon bring there. Mathis some powers or abilities, he'll he'll give you can get his soul I too. hear that. Yeah. If you are. That's the highest. That's the highest uh, tier. Listen, $100,000 tier. I'll pay a scientist to give me powers. What? A hundred thousand dollar tier. I'll pour chemicals on Mathis and electrocute him at the same time. Done. I, I, in a pool of water. Yeah. Something's got to. Something's got to take. Yeah. I got to walk yeah. out gonna, of there with some new. I'm going to be the Jesse Cox show after you're dead and Alex is in jail. <laughs> you know what? No, that's a lie because I was here when it was planned. So I'm going to go to jail too. Thanks. The crazy Alex. thing would be is if I was in jail and the episodes just kept coming out. Oh, you know no. what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> call back episode 69. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Episode 69. <laughs> anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, holy shit, get out here. So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.